Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you my new wood gasifier that I've designed over the past week to be an improvement to my old design. I've used this gasifier in a series of previous videos in making wood gas and charcoal, and this works by using a basic soup can or paint can stove with a smaller paint can inside. This smaller can is filled with biomatter, sticks or twigs or whatever, which is then heated in the stove until it carbonizes, releasing wood gas out of this pipe at the top. This leaves behind charcoal, which can then be collected as a useful byproduct. The issue that I've had with this design is for pure wood gas production, there's a big delay in between batches of wood gas that you can make. Once the biomatter inside this small can has been carbonized, you have to wait for it to cool off to open this can, empty out the charcoal, and then refill it again. And by then, the fire in the stove below has probably gone out. I've tried to solve these issues with this new model by making it completely focused on wood gas production. There's no charcoal as a byproduct because it's recycled right back into the fire that fuels the wood gas production process. And then the refilling of the fuel inside the reaction vessel is very quick as well. At least I hope so, because I have not tested this design yet, so this will be a bit of an experiment to see if this design works well in this video. But before I actually get into the testing, I should take this apart and show you how it went together so you can see what I'm aiming to accomplish. The key features that I believe this design has to offer over my previous model are all based around how the reaction vessel is mounted inside the stove. For my purposes, my reaction vessel will be a two inch diameter piece of pipe. This one is 10 inches long, but it could be any size. This is going to be elevated in my stove, supported by this threaded rod, which is attached to a steel plate and a stainless steel cup, which will be used to seal the end. The cups I'm using are these stainless steel condiment cups. I purchased these online, though I have found them locally for other projects before. It may not be an airtight seal right now, but as we produce wood gas, tar will be produced as a byproduct, and that tar will provide an airtight seal. I'll also be using one of these stainless steel cups on the top of the reaction vessel, and out of this will be extending the pipe that the wood gas will flow through. It has one threaded end, and if you can't find a pipe just like this, I'm sure a brake line could be used as well, just like I used in my earlier wood gasifier projects. This goes on top of the pipe to seal it. I use a heavy socket as a weight just to hold the cap down. This slides right over the end of the pipe that the wood gas will escape from and sits right in the end of the condiment cup. Now the benefit to having the reaction vessel suspended in the air in this way is that when we have finished reacting all the biomatter inside of this chamber and it's all become charcoal, all we have to do to empty that charcoal out is lift up on this vessel slightly and all the charcoal will fall out of the bottom right into the stove that is fueling the reaction. We then just set it back down and to refuel this chamber with fresh biomatter, we lift the top off, drop in some more sticks, put the top back down and it's making wood gas right away. Now the stove itself that I'll be using for this project, I built out of a four by four inch piece of box steel. This is basically a rocket stove, but you could use any number of methods in order to heat this reaction vessel and create wood gas. You could even stack bricks along the outside and just create a simple chimney out of bricks and that would probably work fine. You don't need any sort of piece of steel like this. This was just convenient for me to use. And that about wraps up the features of this stove. So I guess it's just down to testing it and seeing if it really works how I envision it. So I'll just place my stove over the top of my reaction vessel. And I think to convert this into a really effective rocket stove, I'll have to use a few extra bricks just to extend the base of this stove so that there's a little bit more area for the fuel to burn. I'll load the stove with some of these sticks as fuel and also the reaction vessel, light it up and see how well it does to produce wood gas.
This is actually pretty cool to watch right now. I, I just started this stove and uh, for the first little while there was no smoke at all, which tells me this is a really effective rocket stove. Just now you're starting to see a little bit of smoke coming off of this, but that's actually not coming from the inside. The, the wood is actually still burning just 100% efficiently. The smoke is actually from the paint on the outside of this pipe. I just realized I'm probably screwing up the tempering of this nice socket that I'm using as a weight for my lid. I probably should have chosen something a little less expensive, maybe a few large nuts or something instead of the socket. All right, I think we're there. I think we are finally producing a sufficient quantity of wood gas that it is totally ignitable at this point. Pretty impressive production. That is a pretty large quantity of wood gas and it can even sustain a flame on its own at this point, to a certain extent. A lot of people don't realize that burning wood that has already died and fallen on the ground, as I am doing here, is 100% carbon neutral. Because wood in its natural process is digested by fungus, which converts it into CO2 in a similar way as you get when you burn it. So by taking wood that has already died and fallen on the forest floor and burning it and turning it into a useful fuel, we're creating a fuel that we can burn in vehicles and other sorts of things without contributing extra CO2 to the atmosphere. That doesn't mean that this is 100% environmentally friendly because there are other pollutants produced by burning wood in the smoke, like carbon monoxide and tar, but it does not contribute to global warming nearly as much as doing something like burning fossil fuels, which release carbon from the ground that would not be released without intervention. Well, my wood gas production is now slowing, so it's the moment of truth to see how well this design works. The first step I'm going to take is to lift the lid off of this wood gas container. And I'm very happy with how well these sealed. You can tell that the tar, which is now dripping off of this, did a pretty good job of sealing these stainless steel cups to the container that acted as my reaction vessel. So now let's see if I lift this up, if the charcoal will drop out. And my container is empty. The charcoal fell right out and down into the base. I think that's gonna be hard to get on camera without melting my lens. So, well, maybe if I pull this all the way out, you can see that it is empty. And I can put it right back into the furnace. And let's refill it. See how quickly I can do this and see how quickly wood gas production resumes after I do this, because that is equally as important. All right, refilled with fuel. And the lid is back on, and look at that. Did I get that in shot? Yeah, already wood gas is being produced again. I just put the lid back on, but this pipe is hot enough to resume production immediately. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I'll have to count how long that took to change in the new fuel, but I want to say that was under a minute and I was demonstrating it for the camera. I was going slowly for that reason. I probably could do this and shoot probably about 15 seconds. And already, look at that, the wood gas is already being produced. I just repositioned the camera. It's been only about a minute since I switched in the new fuel. It's instant, that's perfect. Well, I was just logging back into Brilliant.org to continue on with some of the courses that I've been working through. Brilliant is once again my sponsor for this video, and recently I've been working on their series about games of chance. Brilliant has some really interesting ways that they use to teach math, science, and logic with courses like this on games of chance, things that seem very practical, and they keep your mind active with lots of puzzles and interactivity through the courses to make sure you really understand the subjects that you're trying to learn about. This is a fun way to learn, and it's really great to keep your mind active. It puts you in the mood for learning, which is a really great thing, because learning is fun if it's gone about in the right way. I mean, learning should be fun. That's why anyone watches videos videos like mine in the first place. Hopefully you learned something from my videos. I know you can learn things from Brilliant. So check them out through the link I've placed in the video description below. If you click through that link and you're one of my subscribers, the first 200 people to do so will get a special offer from Brilliant. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please leave me comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your ideas for the project I made in this video. I know I'll definitely be working on a better collection method for the wood gas. And if you have any other ideas for what I should do with this sort of project, please let me know. And any other ideas you have for future videos on my channel. I'd love to hear from you. I still read all of my comments and it's a highlight of my day to do that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.